Hey y'all, it's Crystal from Crystal's Din and Garden, aka Crystal's Din, and I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, compost. We're going to discuss what exactly is compost, what are the benefits of compost, what we can and cannot, or probably shouldn't compost, and I'm going to show you two methods of composting that I use that I find super low maintenance and really effective. Composting is such a beneficial act that we can do for the mama earth and for ourselves. One of my favorite benefits of compost is the amount of waste it reduces. Where I live, 15 to 25 percent of the landfill is filled with or with, with yard waste, and that doesn't even account for the other organic matter like food scraps and. Uh, paper products that are in the landfill as well so when we compost we are recycling that waste back into the earth instead of filling it with landfills that are just emitting a methane gas uh, that is not good for the environment so composting really has great benefits uh, in terms of just making the sustainable choice for the earth and then when you get that lovely compost you have some great nutrients to add to your garden what exactly is composting? What is compost? Well, compost is basically the decomposition or breakdown of organic matter. Bacteria and fungi use this broken down matter to, well, they use water and air to help break down the matter and eat it, essentially. So they eat it and that helps it decompose and break down into this wonderful, rich, humus-like uh, soil that is called compost and when we use compost we can use it to make our soils better so for example with clay soil uh, it can be really compacted but when you add compost to it it helps loosen it up a bit with sandy soil it can be really uh, hard for water to uh, maintain moisture and so when you add compost to it it helps to retain moisture much more better and then when we add that compost to our plants it makes our plants feel super happy because they get these great nutrients and they grow in a great abundance. So compost just has some really great benefits and it is a perfect way to recycle um, our scraps and waste back into the earth and use it uh, for great purposes. The bugs, we cannot forget about the bugs, the earthworms. They also help our, our organic matter decompose and become this great compost. They eat it, they poop it out and it, and it just helps with the whole process. So definitely can't forget about them. So what makes up our compost? Well, we have our nitrogen rich material or our green material or wetter material. That's going to be things like food scraps, so vegetable food scraps, fruit food scraps, eggshells, uh, grass clippings, fresh grass clippings, excellent because they have a high nitrogen content. It's going to be our tea, our coffee grounds, our nuts, any type of foliage. We don't want like the roots of weeds or anything, but any type of foliage um, or like plant that you have or maybe a plant that's not producing fruit anymore all great nitrogen rich material that can go into the compost um, and then we also have our carbon rich material uh, which is going to be our brown material or um, more uh, drier material and that's going to be things like cardboard um, and not just the regular cardboard we know but also toilet paper roll uh, cardboard and uh, paper towel roll cardboard going to be really great brown material to add to compost uh, what else can be composted our sawdust can be composted paper uh, like regular paper mail that you get can be composted nothing shiny or with the plastic slip um, but just regular paper we also can compost newspaper not the not the classy coupon paper we want to recycle that but the regular newspaper we can recycle uh, we can compost that along with uh, uncoated paper products like paper towels toilet paper uh, toilet tissue and then um, wood chips also really great for compost posting and then small 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 twigs um, small small twigs this is all some really great grab brown material that we can compost um, that we can add to our compost bins and piles and I just want to say that whenever we have our paper products or whether it be newspaper paper uh, paper towel um, uh, regular paper we just want to make sure that we tear it up really good um, so that it is easier to decompose and easier for the bacteria and fungi to break it down and um, get it ready for us 
I can't believe I forgot one of our essential compostable materials, which is dried leaves. Dried leaves are an excellent source of brown material and great to add to your compost. A couple other things to, that are really great to add are also hay and straw. And also with your cardboard and um, like brown paper sacks or anything like that, make sure you're also tearing those up when you add them to your compost. Breads, pastas, and grains are also compostable. Try and avoid composting uh, sweet breads like cake or Twinkies. And also avoid um, composting uh, pasta that has a lot of meat or dairy residue on it. A few other things we can compost are pet fur, hair, dust from a dustpan, wood ashes, ashes from medicinal herbs that we've either smoked or burned and this next one is sparingly because we don't want to bring too much smell to our compost but beer and wine are also compostable. Water and aeration are also essential components to our compost and those come a bit later whenever we make our piles um, or, or have our bins um, because then uh, when you add that water and that aeration that gives the bacteria and fungi um, ways to use it to break down um, the uh, decomposed matter and make it into that great compost. So we've gone over items that we can compost, but what are some things that we shouldn't compost? I will say that some of these items that I'm naming can be composted in certain environments, but from the methods that I'll show you today, they are not good to compost in. So this would be things like meat, dairy, oils, animal bones, pet feces, uh, greases, anything like that we don't want to throw in our home um, compost, especially if you're starting out. Like I said, there are other methods that um, support composting some of those things, but for what I'll show you today, um, it will not be the best. Composting things like that will bring rodents or pests, unwanted pests, and will have really bad smells, and it may make the deco decomposition process um, kind of slow a bit slower. So um, stay away from composting those types of materials. Now that we know what compost is, what we can and cannot compost, and the benefits of composting, let's now talk about where our compost can be located and methods of composting. Where you want your compost to be located is up to you. I personally have chosen shaded areas so that the compost doesn't dry out. And I also chose areas that, well, one that was close, kind of close to my back door, so I for easy throwing out. And um, a couple areas that are just close to the garden for when it's time to add the compost to the garden. So really make sure that you're, you are choosing a spot in your yard um, or wherever you're composting that is um, convenient for you, that doesn't have too much sun, and is um, conducive to uh, composting in. While there are various methods of composting, the two that I'm going to show you today are the trenching or bearing method and cold or passive composting. I really like these uh, forms of composting because they're low maintenance and easy to maintain. The trenching or bearing method has been one that I have been using for the past two years. Essentially what you do is you dig a hole, it doesn't have to be a big one, just big enough to, to hold whatever amount of compost it is that you're dumping, and you throw the compost in there. I usually like to add some type of brown material to mix in there to kind of offset the smell a little bit, so whether that be leaves or wood chips or cardboard, adding that in is always going to be a beneficial factor. And then you throw the dirt back on top, add in a little bit more brown material such as some wood chips or cardboard and call it a day. I like this method because the compost is nice and buried so um, there is definitely not room for pests to come. That was my main kind of concern when I first was composting was I didn't want pests coming and so I found this method to be perfect because since the compost was kind of hidden then uh, it was easy for it to one break down and to not be messed up by anything in like by any type of rodents or uh, pests. So um, trenching or bearing is, is a very effective method. It's simple. Um, when we want to add that water or aeration, you can water the pile, um, the area where you uh, bury the compost. Um, and if you and I usually like to bury it a little bit shallow so that when I do want to turn it or mix it, I can easily kind of 
un, un, unlift it from the earth and mix it a bit. So bearing and the trenching slash the trenching method is very effective, really easy, um, and just perfect for um, composting. The other methods of composting that I utilize are uh, is cold composting or um, passive composting. And I do that in a couple different ways. Let me show you. So I have a bin here that I have been adding compost to. As you can see, there are holes throughout the whole bin to provide aeration. That way I don't have to worry about turning it as much. If you look inside, we'll see I have a mix of my brown material and then buried in there is a lot of the nitrogen rich material. Um, or our green material. Whenever you're having a bin like this, it's just also, it's always good to have a good ratio of browns to green. So uh, some people like to do three part brown, one part green. Some people like to do two part brown, one part green. I would suggest doing at least two or three to one, especially if you are gold composting, just so that you have um, that brown material to neutralize um, the smell and um, so that there won't be too much of a stinky compost. Here is my cold pile. Now this pile is filled with, um, I, I had put old, if you can see right there, old uh, sunflower stalks at the bottom. Um, big shout out to Zero Journey for that tip. When you add those stalks at the bottom, it creates a natural aeration. And then what I've done is just added a variety of things from food scraps to uh, uh, grass clippings to lots of brown material in there to again get that brown material to neutralize the smells um, but also add in that great ratio of browns to greens and so this is a pile that I just kind of let sit along with uh, my bin. I turn them occasionally. I water them occasionally, but I don't do too much to them so as not to uh, overburden myself and to still maintain that low maintenance uh, compost style. Now the holes in my trash can though do provide uh, oxygen or aeration and the sticks, the sticks and the uh, sunflower slugs underneath the cold pile provide aeration as well. But it is good to turn the pile um, occasionally to get, uh, in order to move everything around a bit and um, get more airflow in there as well. So I usually like to, um, you know, turn the one in the bin when I dump uh, my food scraps and brown material in there. And then the one, I'm not going to lie, the one, the cold pile, sometimes, you know, it, it may take me a couple weeks until I turn that one. But, you know, that's the thing about this type of composting. When you turn it and, you know, how often is really kind of up to you. The more you turn, the more, the quicker to break down. Um, but I, I also don't put too much pressure on myself to be turning all the time um just you know once maybe tw once a week maybe once every two weeks just whenever it's you know convenient for me um but you know it, it is good to turn it occasionally um to get that good air more airflow getting uh, going in there in terms of watering those areas having that green material is gonna uh, slash the water material is gonna allow for the compost to remain nice and damp um, but if you do notice that your pile is getting dry, it, I, it is good to water it, add some water to it. I do that with, with both of these if I think it's getting too dry. Um, and that will allow you to keep that good balance of adding that H2O with the aeration along mixed with your green and brown materials. Let me show you a cold pile that I started back in April. 
um, and that is um, almost done breaking down and that I will be using in my, in my fall garden. This is the result of a cold pile that I had started back in April. I probably turned this pile a total of four times and I also um, added to it for about a month. So it's been breaking down since then. I'm really liking the way it looks. The soil feels nice and fluffy. You can still see like bits of like twigs and some remnants of leaves but the soil feels really good and it's starting to um, look really nice so I'm really excited I'm going to be adding this to my fall uh, garden thank you so much for watching whether you start composting today tomorrow in 10 years five years I really hope that this video gave you some information on the benefits of it how you can get started what you can just compost and the ways that you can compost your compostable materials Thank you again for watching. This has been Crystal from Crystal's Den and Garden, a.k.a. Crystal's Den, and I can't wait to talk with you next time. Happy composting!